Once we headed out to sea, we decided to take advantage of the awesome conditions and headed out to look for the plankton eaters. And that is the whale shark and the manta rays. We headed out to one of our favorite manta spots, probably the spot we've had the most success with, the showroom. Now these mantas and whale sharks will be here during this time of year because as the water cools, it is able to hold more nutrients and in specific, it's the plankton they come here to feed on. Now this fairly nondescript looking reef is what we call showroom because it seems to have one of everything on it. This forms a beautiful crèche for a lot of different reef species. In the meantime, this feather star has attached itself and is wafting to and fro with a gentle surge, removing the plankton itself from the water. It uses the very fine hairs or bristles on its long arms and with it, it gently moves the plankton towards the mouth at the center of the body. A little further along we came across another anemone in the surge and in the background you can see a lot of dominoes as well as this beautiful tuba anemone fish. We're finding as global warming occurs this ocean around Sudwana Bay is actually improving. There is more life and more creatures here than ever before as the sea temperatures rise a few degrees. Unfortunately, we lucked out today as far as manta rays go, but it was nonetheless a beautiful dive and it's great to get back into this warmer water. This dive site goes by the name of Bikini because although it is relatively small, it hides a lot. This ledge is the main reason that the mantas tend to aggregate here. As the current passes this ledge, it causes upwellings and the mantas tend to stick around here because it assists with their feeding patterns. It's also home to numerous other fish and these big tomato rock cod as well as the butterfly fish are usually resident within this cleaning station. While we were staring up into the distance and looking at the water above us for these huge rays, something caught our attention on the reef itself. This is an absolutely stunning specimen of an octopus. It's rather large and at this point is probably standing nearly a foot up off the reef. You can see with absolute ease and gracefulness that this creature begins to work its way over the top of the reef. It almost seems to be floating on a bit of a hydrofoil. You can see the way it changes its color. The texture is slightly bubbled and this is matching the algae on the rock itself. And it assists in catching prey as well as avoiding potential predators. A lot of the time when we do encounter these octopus, they're quite shy creatures and they'll usually retreat within their holes pretty quickly. But perhaps because of the size of this individual, it is more confident and that's why it has revealed itself as well as exposed itself on the top of the reef. Here in the background you can see the big plate coral and not only is it matching the texture of the plate coral itself but it's also matched the color pretty much exactly.
down below, you have eight long legs with these beautiful, strong suction cups with which the octopus will actually use to grasp its prey. The octopus is an absolutely fascinating creature as it actually has no bones within the body and it can fit into pretty much any hole or crevice and has been known to actually climb in through the neck of glass bottles. gets slightly startled and eventually retreats back into the hole. difference diving down here in the Cape compared to up in Zuland and KwaZulu-Natal. Down here today our temperature gauges were reading 13 degrees so it's extremely cold and the vegetation that you find in the oceans here is completely different and what was immediately noticeable on this first dive was the nutrient rich water that you found here. A lot of zooplankton, phytoplankton, a lot of krill floating around. And all of this is the foundation of a huge ecosystem that basically evolves around these tiny organisms. There's a small seal colony here off Hart Bay and it was quite a special occasion to get into the water with these animals and just observe their, their behavior. Most of the animals that are found in the water today were females. Every now and again a big male would come in just to have a look at me, perhaps seeing if I was some kind of threat Their main predator obviously being the great white shark. They have a couple of defense mechanisms against these animals. One, they'll always take to the water in big numbers. They're always vigilant in the water. They're always looking around. Even when they go up to the surface, you'll see them almost lying with their back flippers out the water, heads down in the water, looking around, looking below them. Obviously the attack will always come from below. And just their agility in the water is probably their main defense against the, the great whites. They'll hang like that for five, six minutes at a time, take a breath, do a dive and move on. What was quite evident right from the beginning of getting in the water with these animals was they really seemed to be having fun. Swimming in and out, doing circles, and quite often a little wave would form above this little pinnacle and they would wait and almost surf the wave back towards the shore. 